I feel like I get corona off a party. Um, I got corona the correct way. Motherfuckers just get corona from opening the door. Now. If I can get it from the door, Come on, man. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to have fun. <laughs> We are back with another episode of Explicit Content. I'm here with my good friend Paris, Paris Godfrey, um, Miss 702 as you can see. <laughs> how you doing? How are you today, Paris? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm cool. So um, Paris is the founder of Round and Round, it's a sustainability company, um, Spelman, student at Spelman College, and she's also from Las Vegas. So diving in a little deeper, I want you to tell us about growing up in Las Vegas. Um, you know, everybody thinks of Las Vegas is club city, you feel me, right. strippers, money gambling. Right. But I'm pretty sure as a high school student or growing up there, it wasn't just that. So I want to, you feel me, figure out a little bit more about that. It was like, I don't know, growing up in Vegas, I feel like it's growing up. It's like growing up anywhere else. Like you go to the movies, you go bowling, like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you have the option of having like a completely different life, life type stuff. Like, I don't know, when you turn like 16, you like walk on the strip and like you turn 21 and like, you can have the friends that you grew up with, like going with you to like the bars, the clubs, right. all that stuff for like the first time. And it's always like, a, it's like a, like it's a, a lot of anticipation, like right. waiting until you turn 21, because then sure. you can actually like touch all this stuff. Okay. But when I turned 21, like I went gambling this past summer and it was not what I expected. Like you I lost was, money? Yes, I have fifteen dollars. Put it in there. I'm sitting here pulling so the thing, and I look, yeah, and I looked up, and I'm like, the fifteen dollars is gone. I have like forty six cents left, like, and I didn't win anything. So that part wasn't super super exciting for me. It was kind of a letdown, but I don't know. I think growing up there is like one of the coolest experiences because you see like so many different people, so many different like, I don't know, just so many different things, and like you you grow up like super open minded because everything happens in Vegas like you can't you don't really grow up judging nothing because no for sure you really can't for sure so I know um Yaya Mayweather is from Vegas and she's yeah. also around the same age did you ever like go to her parties or anything like that or? I never went to her parties but um my friends would go she would like pull okay. up to the other high schools to drop off like her birthday party invitations and stuff and people would like be fighting to try to get into her parties she always had like performers like artists and stuff so I think her 16 she had like Drake and Future, so it was also like it was like a concert, but also like the party of the year. And she added at like the biggest hotel, so gotcha. it was always popping. So okay, last kind of question about Vegas. Um, like I said, it's known for like a party town, and then you feel me. Um, obviously the desert. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's it's kind of like everywhere else. You feel me? Right. So like, you feel me? Can you explain that like how you go from the strip, you feel me, to the desert, and then you got residential in the middle? Yeah. So. The strip is literally one street. Like it's Las Vegas Boulevard, and it's like it's a long street, but it's and it's like a couple of little feed off streets. But it's really just like one area. So when I tell people like I'm from Vegas, they be like, "Oh, you live on the strip." But there's so much more city. Like yeah. it's like hella houses and stuff like that. And then Vegas also has like a very, very, very big like nature scene. Okay. So there's two lakes. There's Lake Las Vegas and then Lake Mead. There's like the whole city is surrounded by mountains, so it's a lot of places to like hike and stuff. There's Red Rock Canyon, which is like good for hiking, um, but it's really like a desert. So like the weather, it's like a hundred and something yeah, during nah, the summer, was, like it's hot. What's the place called? Death Valley, I think. Yeah, Death I had Valley. Gas in Death Valley, that shit was like one fifteen. Okay. Yeah, Death Valley is extremely hot. I think Death Valley is maybe like thirty minutes outside, but the city itself, like it's not, it's not big, it's not like crowded or anything. It might take about I would say like four maybe maybe fifty minutes to get like from one end to the other but okay. it's cool. I love growing up in Vegas. Okay. So obviously um with your brand riding around it's a sustainability brand. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you tied in your love for nature and you know, growing up in Vegas. Yeah. To your passion with fashion. So did you have like any fashion influences in Vegas or growing up who were your fashion influences? Ooh. Like in, you know I think in the women's industry. Dang. Okay, so I think I think in Vegas specifically, so because there are a lot of people from like Cali who moved to right. Vegas, a lot of my like a lot of the stuff that I grew up wearing, like I grew up wearing like Vans, like Dickies pants, like, literally all that stuff, like Converse, all that. Um, but my brother was really he hooped, so he was really really into like sneakers and stuff, like like Nike, Jordan, all that stuff. So I like would always wear like the stuff that he couldn't fit anymore. So it was really like finding new ways to wear like sneakers and stuff like that and then um 
as far as like influences, I really didn't start like looking into fashion for real for real until I got older. And it wasn't anybody like specific or anybody famous. It was just like people I saw on Instagram that I was like, oh. okay, like she dresses cool. Um, like I can try that with like this. Like I don't have the bait piece that she has, but like I have yeah, this. this like, you know? piece, no, exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think Vegas I think most of my influence came from just like being on the West Side. Okay, I West Side shit. Nipsey Hustle. <laughs> Alright, so um obviously like I said, you're a brand. Um I okay, I will take I'll say this. I looked in your page and I saw um round and round you have the hand painted, you feel mm-hmm. me? It's a hand painted, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. So I saw the hand painted um N six hundred clothes, I'm like, yeah, it's definitely some shit I've never seen. <laughs> and it brings attraction, you feel me, because it's a sustainability brand. It's you know, it's one of its kind type shit. So right. um where did you, you know, get the, the ideas for this or what made you wanna start a sustainability brand? So I've always been into like really just trying new stuff. So um one of my friends growing up, she did like a capsule wardrobe that I talked about in my last blog post and mm-hmm. I was like when we were in high school and I was like, Oh, this is super cool, like I'm gonna try it. She put me on to like minimalism and sustainability and all of that. Um, and then like as I got older, I realized like I was just buying so much stuff. Like I would be like, oh, this is cool, let me buy it. And then it would just like sit for a while. Yeah, for sure. And I was like, you know what? Instead of me like giving away stuff every six months and it's like stuff that I'm not even wearing or I don't like after I buy it, like why don't I just like flip it into something that I do like? So I have a pair of sweatpants. Like I like the way that they fit, that they're kind of plain and I don't really like them. Like. Let me make myself like them, like, because okay. I also don't. I'm in college, like, I don't have the brand to be yeah. continuously buying stuff. Sure. So I'm gonna just make my clothes like my favorite clothes. So I saw that you were doing pre-orders. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit more about that. Is this your first collection, or you know, I saw you did something earlier in the summer, and that's when mm-hmm. I uh, first noticed the brand. But I want to bring you on explicit content. So let me talk about it because I feel as, as sustainability is important. Right. Um, you're doing it pretty authentic, so you know. <laughs> Break it down, like you feel me. How did you know how is how is going for you? Um, so the first like drop was using thrifted items. So oh, it was like stuff that either I already had laying around or like I went to the thrift store and like picked up stuff that I was like, this would be interesting, like I could I could do something with it. Um, but then after just like thinking about it and reading like, you know, Twitter threads and Instagram posts and stuff, people were talking about how like sustainability also has to be ethical. So there are a lot of people who like rely on thrifting to like, you know, for their clothes and stuff. Right. And then there's also a lot of people who are, like, thrifting stuff just to flip it and, like, make money. So they're buying up, like, T-shirts and, like, vintage clothes and stuff. And even, like, people who are buying extra large clothes and then making it into, like, two-piece sets and stuff. So people who actually have to go thrifting, like, don't have as much because all the cool stuff is getting, like, bought up. All right. So slow down a little bit, my (laughs) friend. Let's break down um, exactly what sustainability is or being sustainable, you feel me, for the viewers. So I want you to just, you know, tell people how they can be sustainable, you feel me, or just give a basic definition of sustainability. Okay, so sustainability is really, like, altering or just kind of, like, making small changes to your life to, like, better the environment, like, the, just the environment that we live in, the world, the climate, all that. Okay. So then you you said something about thrifters. um, Right reselling clothes and mm-hmm. I know that's a big thing like because you see the Telfar bags people getting mad because yeah. them bitches are getting resold for yeah. you know skyrocketed price but I never really looked at resale culture as a problem until now and then it's the second thing I'm hearing of it so you are saying that resale culture is a problem in thrifting because I get it like I understand and I grew I feel like we all grew up with like, yeah. like with the rise of resale culture but um, I think with thrifting specifically because there are people who are like um like low, like there are lower income people who rely right. on that. No, like, hundred percent. It's it's not ethical for me to go in and buy like fifty pieces to go back and like you know sell them for seventy five dollars when there are people no, who like sure. rely on that type stuff. So. I'm just thinking because, like you said, uh, I know I used to thrift at a young age, like ten, twelve. Yeah. And you know you can get some real good shit thrifting. Right. And it's like now, it, your chances are way slimmer because of resale exactly. culture. You feel me? You exactly. got people who gonna go. Every Tuesday and Thursday. As a business. Like, yeah, no. And, and it's that. And so, I don't okay. know. I think that's kind of why I shifted from, like, using thrifted clothes. Like, I'm still I'm still kind of open to it. If somebody has, like, a hoodie that they already own and they don't, you know, like, they're trying you know, to figure out something. Exactly. Them. Like, oh, I'll okay. flip it for them. I'm going to say you <laughs> So, but, um, okay. But, um, yeah, so I shifted from that to doing pre-orders and ordering, like, blanks. But instead of buying, like, blanks that are made in china somewhere in some factory like the stuff that i buy is like eco-friendly it's organic cotton so when you wash it like 
the materials aren't getting like the harmful materials aren't getting sucked out and like polluting the water. Okay. That's it. Okay, so what's next for uh for round and round? Oh. Are you so okay? All right, I'll tell you what. So you're doing a pre order for a hoodie right now, right? Mm-hmm. It's just one item. It's two different hoodies. Okay. So as far as collection, do you think you'll just keep going like because it is sustainability? I guess or sustainable. I guess you'll just keep doing cutting song, and you ever think you'll get like you feel me more so like I got a round and round t shirt and stock. You feel me? I think um, I'm open to anything for real. It's really just like whenever I come up with an idea for something, the sec- like the first thing is like the idea and then the second thing is like, okay, well, how can I make this and make it sustainably? So I don't think I'm ever going to like mass produce anything. Okay. That's just for not sure. like... For sure. Any yeah. collabs in the future? I think so. I'm open to anything really. Like okay. I'd be having like 101 ideas a day. So, okay. so um, how are like companies or... So you're a young sustainable designer. Mm-hmm. How are like companies making it for you guys, like as young designers, versus you know the big time companies who mass produce? Are they making their their uh, clothes more sustainable? You feel me? Are they making it harder for you? Or are they making it easier for you? Or you know what I'm saying? Like what's the yeah. what's going on with sustainability in the corporate world? If you know, um, I know. Like I've been looking into just like the way that sneaker brands have been trying to create sustainable shoes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think it's cool. Um, I'm kind. I kind of go back and forth, like trying to figure out like where I stand on it. But I think in general, like sustainability as a trend is is cool for the most part. Um, I think it's kind of hard to compete with like other brands or like other businesses or whatever because it's so much cheaper to produce like to mass produce stuff in countries where you don't have to pay for like where you don't have to pay like a living a livable wage. Um, for sure. And, like, people value that. So, like, the Fashion Overs, the Sheehan's, all of those, like, the fast fashion companies, like, you can get a t-shirt for $5 or for $10 because it only costs, like, exactly, 17 cents to make it. Whereas, like, if you have somebody in the U.S. who's, like, you know, putting their back into, like, actually making it, they're having to pay more on, like, the front end so that everything is, like, sustainable, it's, like, handmade, it's ethical, all of that, like, it's going to cost more. So, I think that's probably, like, the hardest part, just trying to navigate, like, charging more for a product, but also making sure that you're, like, paying yourself and, like, feeding yeah. yourself right. Okay. That's understandable, I guess. But, you know, capitalism and all that. Exactly. So. <laughs> all right, so, I mean, um, other than your, well, last, this is kind of the last question I had about your brand, but I'm guessing uh, Round and Round just kind of stands for, you feel me, your clothes going around and around, like, mm-hmm. it's being recycled, right? Exactly. Okay, all right, so I answered that question myself. So, um, you're a student at Spelman, uh, senior year. What are your plans? Or do you, can you have any plans? You're looking to do anything? How's Spelman been? Okay. So. It's always been cool. Um, I don't regret it at all. Like, okay. I think it was, it was a great decision. But I think doing, like, internships and stuff over the summer, because Spelman's, like, super big on, like, pushing that, has shown me, like, I can't work for nobody. Like, no, I, sure. I, it's just not for me. The nine to five is just not for me. Like, Living out and feeding somebody else's dream is just not, is not me. We could make our own dream. Exactly, at this point. So, it's trying to find ways to, like, not fold on what I want in the future, but also, like, be able to, like, survive. What's your major? Sociology. Why did you pick that one? you have any? So, I came in as a poli-sci major, and I was like, I'm going to law school, I'm going to be a lawyer, like, all that. And then I looked at, like, the course sequence thing, like, when we first registered, and I saw a constitutional law or government or whatever it was and I was like not for me absolutely not changed my major I took a sociology class in high school but I really don't know like why I chose it but I, I'm glad I did for real. all right no I'll feel that I mean sociology is a study of people you're a cool person so you <laughs> it worked me. I get that all right so how has like the sisterhood and spelling been um with your brand it's been cool like I well, where do you see a lot of your support from and what do you need to get your support from? Um, <laughs> I think a lot of my support comes from, like, my friends, for okay. real, like, reposting my stuff, um, and then even beyond, like, reposting, just, like, hitting me on the side, like, I'm proud of you, like, that goes a long way, um, because it's really, like, going out on a limb each time, like, I drop something, or yeah, each time I have sure. an idea, and, like, I try something new, um, but also, like, you know, students from Morehouse, like, reposting, you know, sending words of encouragement, all that. Like, the whole AUC community is really, like, super supportive. Um, and also just my brother. That's probably the biggest one. Him, like... Shout him out. He got an S on. Okay, that's Austin. His Instagram is Austin K. Godfrey. 
I think. Sure. Just search Austin Godfrey. He's going to be the one to pop up. But, right, sure. um, yeah, him for sure. Like, anytime I have an idea, it could be 6 o'clock in the morning. I call him, like, running by him. I'm like, what do you think? He's like, oh, you know, have you thought about this? What about this? Like, you know, he's really, like, my creative team. Like, it's okay. me and Austin for real. All right, so speaking of creative team, where do you get a lot of your creativity from? Like, what inspires you? You listen to music? You feel me? You up late at night? Like, what is it for you? My sleeping schedule is crazy. Like, for sure. I'm up, like, probably 11 to, like, 6 most days, most nights. Not time. Yeah, and that's where, like, most of my most of my good ideas come from. Um, but also just, like, I think Instagram is a great source of infor- inspir- inspiration. Oh, my gosh. And also, like, being outside, like, that always helps. Like, fresh air. And then, like, thinking about, like, this, the places that I enjoy going. Like, I love hiking. So, you know, being out, being outside, being outdoors, being around, like, animals and nature and, like, all that. So you say you love outside. Like, how was Corona for you? Like, the quarantine, how was that? It was, it was rough. It was rough. But it was a good, like, it was a good shift because I learned how to, like, be by myself and, like, you know, be in solitude, like, inside. But I also, like, still went hiking and stuff. I was just, like, socially dis- or social yeah, distancing no, or whatever. Yeah, six feet away. Yeah. Um, and, like, exploring new places. Like, there's a lot of places to hike in Atlanta that I didn't know I was, about for. Okay. So I was just about to say, you're a hiker. Um, what are some spots that you go to in Atlanta? What's the place called? It's like Sweetwater Creek Falls or I something. Mean, I've been there for sure. Cascade Nature Preserve is a good place to hike. Um, and it's like a little, uh, maybe it's a creek. I don't know, creek, I'm river, whatever. Sure this is true. I just found out here. It's like it don't even look like Atlanta. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's how it was when I went to the Cascade Nature Preserve. It's like down the street from Piedmont Park, and like you wouldn't ever know. Um, but yeah, I prefer, I think a lot of the stuff that I would like want to explore is like more northern Georgia, so it's like a couple hours away. But yeah, that's what I also like about Vegas. Like the stuff is yeah. like 45 minutes away, if that. For sure. So, all right, yeah. So, all right. And back in Vegas, um, how was the hiking scene there? I know it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like yeah. out there. It's you got cool. like a favorite spot out there? Uh, so you want to put us on there? Okay, so Lone Mountain is probably, like, the easiest hike, for real. It's, like, uh, literally a mountain in the middle of some neighborhoods. But it's, like, where everybody kind of goes to hike. It's not it's not really hard. It's nearby. Um, and then Frenchman's Peak or Frenchman's Mountain or whatever, that's the hardest hike I've ever done in my life. Like Yeah. What makes it, So what makes a hike hard and what makes it, obviously, the length and the Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Incline? Yeah. Okay. I think... I think that and just the, the, really the length, like you finish one mountain, but the hike isn't over. Like to get to like the view, it's like a whole nother mountain that you have to like climb. So that was really hard. And then Gold Spike Canyon is really good. It's like a hot springs that connects to the Colorado River. So it's really, really pretty. All right. What are some inspirational quotes you've ever done? Um, Or just, you can see. My favorite quote is, even as we are, we are becoming. It's from my favorite book, Star Girl. Um, it's basically like you know, we're always growing, we're evolving. Like, it's no, there's no need to like get caught up in how you are now and like the stuff that's happening now because we're still like yeah. evolving and stuff. Snowball effect. Exactly. exactly. So, all right. Um, let's say it's a young designer watching right now, or somebody you familiar watching this and they get inspiration from you. What would you like them to know? Um, really, read Davia's blog, Muse. Not even to plug her but to plug her but that like really like anything any and every like answer that you're searching for like you really have within you like you can pull from your own like old life experiences like the stuff that you experience it now but it's really no need to like granted outside inspiration is helpful but really like all that you have within you is like what you need to like move forward where can they find a blog what's her name it's muse blog muse-blog.com or something like that but her instagram is davia simone at d-a-v-i-a-s-y-m-o-n-e any last thing you you want to put into that man go outside for real go outside and just be in the fresh air like be in some sunlight and talk to your friends like check on your friends and what else listen to listen to what's the goal money man i would say no I would say listen to Money Man. 
listen to um, My Turn by Lil Baby. Listen to Just Cause Y'all Waited Too by Dirt. With How Money Man? No. I listen to, I didn't even listen to that. I can't put them on to that night here. I ain't heard it. Um, Victory Lab. Just go watch Nipsey Hustle interviews. That's really it. I give no. Nah, I give more inter- or I get more motivation from his videos and interviews. Like, like music videos. But they like they like little short films and shit. Okay. Like, bitches be lit. But I feel like his interviews is where he's like, yeah, I don't I know. Drop it down. Yeah. Damn. No, that's real shit. I'm trying to hit. So I wish I could have got one. I feel like I'm really like talking to him. Like. It's Damn. Cool. All right. Everybody needs to listen to me. All right. So, so <laughs> but that's you know, he's been real. Drop your socials. Um, let them know where they can cops around and around. Okay, so my Instagram is Paris Godfrey, P A R S G O D F R E Y. It's gonna be somewhere around here. You gotta add it because I just did that. <laughs> For sure. No, it's gonna be important. <laughs> and then the website is Round and Round R O U N D, and then an N, and then Round Clothing dot com. All right, so it's been real. Thank you, Paris. <laughs> Another episode of Explicit Content. Of course.